Hey everybody, our next guest is David Hildebrand. We've had David on the show many times before, but this is the first time we've had him on for a fundraiser like this. And uh, David's just stopping by. He's the busiest uh, progressive that I know of. He, uh, we had this uh, this recording scheduled uh, for uh, uh, I don't know a different day, and then an event came up, and then we had this scheduled for earlier today, and, and another event came up. He's just always going somewhere, meeting people. I don't know anybody who does as much coverage as, as David does. Uh, please welcome uh, to our program, David Hildebrand. How you doing, David? All right. It's been, like you said, I've been very busy lately. A lot of stuff's going on. Yeah, yeah. Tell us where you just came from. You were you were at an event earlier tonight, right? Yeah. So after work, I am still working full, full time while doing this. Uh, after work, I went to the Stephon Clark City Hall hearing. I actually canceled the city hall here or the regular city hall hearing to have an open mic for Stefan Clark and uh, community activists. So I didn't go in there. I'm not the voice of this community. So I let them, you know, do their thing and they organized everything. I just, you know, showed up to show solidarity. Um, they wouldn't let most of us into city hall. So we went in anyway. Um, they had a bunch of metal detectors outside and we're trying to filter people in slowly and all this stuff. But the crowd wasn't having that. So we actually went in and took over city hall. And wow. uh, we didn't make it into the actual chamber, though. So um, after that, since they wouldn't let us in, we marched down to the arena and shut it down for the second time this week. I wasn't at the first shutdown, um, but I was at this one. And uh, as far as I know, they're still down there holding the arena down. Wow. And uh, for those of you who haven't heard, um, this is all about Stefan Clark, who I've got over my shoulder here. Um, yeah, right up there. Um, so, yeah, so basically, for those of you who haven't heard, um, there is a reported basically some someone breaking into car windows in the neighborhood. Um, they found some guy in their helicopter camera and decided that was a guy, chased him down to his backyard and shot him 20 times uh, because he had a phone in his hand in his own backyard. So there's a lot of community uh, movement, a lot of protests going on right now. Friday night, I was down in South Sacramento at a march. Um, Saturday, I went to the uh, March for Our Lives, and there was a huge crowd of Stefan Clark people that actually started a chant down there for Stefan Clark. Awesome. Um, and then today, the City Hall thing. So uh, Sacramento is really buzzing with activist activity. I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see people coming out. Very diverse crowd of protesters. Awesome. Um, so that's awesome as well. We have support all around. Very peaceful. We literally shut down several intersections in South Sacramento and did not have any incidents like all the way up till 1040. Wow. Um, about, that's about the time I left. We got back to the station, uh, the train station that is, um, and I thought it was over. So I was walking to my car and apparently it wasn't. They had shut down that intersection too. So uh, as I was leaving, I watched a cop car drive through the crowd of protesters after a completely peaceful protest in March. Um, we got back to the main intersection and they assembled there. And I, like I said, I look back and like on 29th street, which is the last street we went down, it was completely silent. Like it was a completely silent March past the family's house all the way down 29th. It was a neighborhood. We didn't want to keep people up. It was already later at night. And, uh, like I said, I turned around and saw the cop car drive through the crowd. Of course, the crowd of people hit the cop car with their signs and everything. And then a second cop car flew through the opening and they were going way too fast to be driving around people. So it's just like they were almost purposely trying to instigate the crowd to do something. And then I was watching the live feeds later that night, and they actually sent out like guys in riot gear and, and looking like they're from the SWAT team or something. But it seemed to have gone off. But besides that, it seemed to have ended without you know too much you know craziness. Wow. Um, the family and a lot of the organizers locally want it to be a peaceful march. Um, well, I got my shirt on right here. It's uh, Build Black. Um, basically, a lot of the message for uh, the movement is they want to save Sacramento. And if there's police brutality and police killings like this, this is the second major one recently. Um, if this keeps happening, then there's not going to be peace in Sacramento. So we need to actually reform the police in Sacramento and elsewhere in this country. And that's why we're out there marching on the streets to uh, show people that we're out there in solidarity. Um, a lot of local groups and unions are actually involved in a lot of these actions as well. Wow. So it's, it's getting to be a big movement. Hopefully uh, everyone on the nation nationwide scale has heard about it. 
Yeah, it's and it and the tension. I mean, it's not just that. I mean, Alton Sterling uh, uh, verdict came down today. Uh, no charges for the officers involved in that. Um, this seems to be the case. It's it's we have a big problem here with with uh, uh, just gun violence in general, but certainly in the hands of police officers. Um, thank you for being on the march there. Um, let's uh, let's tell everybody who you're uh, uh, the fool that you're ultimately uh, running through a place here in uh, in California government. Tell everybody who you're running against. Well, I'm running against Diane Feinstein for U.S. Senate. Uh, she hasn't represented. California for the last 25 years, even though she's been reelected because she's got that D next to her name on the ballot and she's got millions of dollars she can throw on the race. Um, last year, right before the filing deadline, she donated $5 million to her own campaign as a shot over the bow to anyone who would come up and try to oppose her or run against her. Um, Kevin DeLeon uh, raised less than 500000 So for a corporate candidate, that's nothing for him. So this is a wide open race. So uh, I tell people I'm in this till the primary and we'll see what happens there. And I will remain in this race and I won't be getting out of this race at any time for any reason um, until the voters have their choice. You, you've been and, and I just I just want to commend you on your staying power. You have certainly shown that you are not going anywhere. I mean, you entered the race. You were the first person I think we interviewed for the race, and that was months and months ago. And you've endured all sorts of criticism. You've uh, there's how many other progressives? You got Pat Harris. You got Allison Hartson. I don't know who else is in, in the race that's progressive, but I know there's those two. And you guys are on great terms, right? You're not, uh, you know, you you guys are all roughly on the same page, right? Yeah, I mean, there's been bumps. Um, I don't like to get into details negatively. Um, a lot of stuff will come out after the election. But at this point, I will say that there's been some bumps. But for the most part, we don't attack each other. Me, Allison, and Pat don't attack each other. There's no reason to, really. We bear the same platform. The issues are where we got that platform. And whether we actually stand for what we're saying we stand for. Um, Pat's out there on the road doing as much, you know, work as I am, if not more, he's, uh, not working right now. So he can go out and do a lot more than me. So, um, and then, um, Allison's actually been missing events. So I don't know what that's about. I went to three events in LA she was scheduled for, and she didn't show up to any of the three. Wow. And we've got three different stories, you know, about why she didn't show up. So a lot of people at those events were very upset. She had fans at those events, and uh, they were upset as well because they were wanting to see her, and she didn't show up for those events. So, I mean, wow. if I could fly down there from Sacramento and attend an event in her neighborhood, then I think she can show up. So that's, you know, it's it's kind of upsetting that she didn't. Wow, so, I, I was not aware of that. Day, I mean, if one of us three wins, you know, that's that's a good thing. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, we need to have people out there that are actually going to push for it. And, I, you know, I'm really hoping that she starts actually pushing for it or decides to drop out because, you know, like she's, she's been disappointing a lot of people. A lot of people put a lot of effort into organizing things and to not show up to those things is, is upsetting for everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, uh, that's, uh, thank you for the update on that. And, uh, uh, honestly, just like I said, you have been, uh, consistent going to, I don't know, you're just amazing at the number of events that you've been going to. And I just want to thank you for running because it, it, as we've learned through this process, it's the hardest thing to do uh, in all of this. And uh, so thank you. Uh, where are you going to be next? Tell everybody where you're going to be next. Uh, that's not an easy question. I'm going to be <laughs> uh, basically everywhere again. Um, I have a couple events scheduled down in Southern California. I've got some Northern California events getting put together for April. So basically what I end up doing is I schedule a certain number of events and then I get invited to a, a certain number of events. Some of those events are last minute. So I had one event that I wasn't scheduled for, Petrero Hill Dams um, in Sa San Francisco. And two days before the event, someone said, hey, David, you're not on their schedule. You should contact so-and-so. So I contacted the guy and said, hey, I'm running as a Democrat, and I noticed you have three candidates, but you don't have me. I just wanted to clarify that I'm a Democrat, and I'm interested in coming to your event. Right. So I did. I went to the event, and I was the only person for U.S. Senate that showed up to that event. So they had three. They had uh, Feinstein, um, Kevin DeLeon, and Pat Harris on their schedule. Um, no one showed up. No one even sent anyone to the club meeting. Wow. So I was the only Senate candidate. So it's pretty... Uh, it's a pretty conservative Democratic club from what I saw the votes come out to be. Um, but I think we did actually stop Feinstein from getting nice. uh, an endorsement from that club just for showing up. 
I had uh, at least one lady approach me afterward and said, I voted for you mainly because you're the only one who showed up. <laughs> so it nice. was that important to her to actually be represented. And this is what I'm telling people. This is what I've been telling people across the state. It's that important for her to be represented that showing up is what, you know, really sold it. Because if someone's not willing to show up, I mean, I'm in Feinstein's literal backyard at that event. And right. She didn't show up. Well, because so, I'm guessing the people that were there are not as rich as what she's used to courting. So. Yeah, well, and she doesn't need to. She relies on her name recognition. And I don't know if that's going to do it for her this time around. I don't think so. You guys already denied her the endorsement. We're cutting short on time. Tell everybody where to go to uh, help you, to volunteer, to donate. You've got a really strong campaign going. So tell everybody where to go and amplify that. Yeah, so it's davidforcalifornia.com is the website. Um, you can connect through to Twitter and Facebook through those two things. Uh, there is a donate link on that site, but you can also go to davidforcalifornia.com forward slash donate now. For those who uh, don't like Act Blue, we have Donor Box, but you guys got to get on it because Act Blue is getting a lot more donations than Donor Box. There you go. So let's uh, get on the donations. And like I told people, I'll be in this race till the end, but my campaign is fueled by your small donation. That means if we run out of money, then we can't fly down to L.A. or even drive down to L.A. and do events. We can't go to Northern California for events. So, I mean, it's it's a lot of people are tight right now, but it's very important that, that the campaigns that you care about and you want to see, you know, be successful, we need to donate to those campaigns. So I don't know if, how many of you follow me on Twitter already, but I've been promoting a lot of other candidates on Twitter because it's important that we get those people money as well. So, like... Um, Tamika LaCluse is running for city council in Sacramento. I put her out on my Twitter feed and tried to get her some donations today. So it's very important that we support progressives in the race. A lot of progressives have had to drop out, um, some of them for funding, some of them for lack of support. Absolutely. So if you want to volunteer, go to the website. You can sign up. There's a very easy volunteer link right up at the top. Um, you can volunteer. We actually are finishing up our final touches on our campaign uh, canvassing. Uh, we've got a, a, a California lead that's working on that. So we are actually going to, instead of just knock it, knocking every door in your neighborhood like we've been doing, it's going to be an actual organized campaign. We are in position of the whole voter file. That's so awesome. Now we just need boots on the ground and donations coming in to keep this going. And we'll keep going forward. Like I said, I'm in this till the end. So if you guys want to push me to the lead, then that's up to you. And I'm counting on you guys to do that. Awesome. David Holdbrand, thank you so much for running. And thank you so much for joining us on No More Fools Day, April 1st, 2018.